Hey guys, what's going on, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're doing more Roman history, and picking up from where we left off in the last video, which is where, uh, if you remember, um, Ancus Martius died. Um, of natural causes, of course, you know, at least that's what the histories say. So we'll continue with the successor, who I talked about in the last video, um, Tarquin, or Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, to give his full name. Now, uh, Tarquin was apparently fit to be king because his wife, who was apparently very skilled in prophecy, um, basically an eagle, just pretend this is an eagle, um, swooped down, took off his hat, and then put it back. So that qualified him to be a king. E yeah, not too much has changed in the last 5,000 years. Um, after that, um, we've, we see that uh, Tarquin is given guardianship over Ancus Martius's two sons, shown here, and, uh, basically, he's allowed to do whatever he wants with them, because he's their guardian. I yeah. So, Tarquin sends them on a hunting trip, and then when Ancus Martius dies, has himself declared king, and they can't even influence it, because they're away. Um, th that's not the last we'll see of them, but, um, for now, Tarquin has basically secured his hold on the kingship. Now, the first couple of things he did were military campaigns. So Rome, over here, in the region of Latium, or modern-day Lazio, is um, basically just going to campaign against various Latin towns, you know, here, 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 like that. And it's going to win. It's going to expand its territory even further, and it's going to basically become an Italian, central Italian regional power. Uh, so basically, Tarquin was very successful on these initial campaigns, and brought home uh, a buttload of money, which um, he promptly spent on celebrations. Tarquin was basically the one that introduced many of the tr modern tr Roman triumphs that we know today, um, and he rode on a chariot with four white horses, and he did many things that um, lived on throughout the Roman Republic. Now, Tarquin was then attacked by a coalition of Sabines, so the Sabines were from the southeast of Rome. So they basically and they attacked Rome, apparently some of the fighting went on inside the city itself. And Tarquin fought the Sabine um, invaders along with an Etruscan, uh, some, a couple of ex Etruscan auxiliaries from the north, so Etrusca, Et Etruria, sorry, was to the north of Rome, and the, um, the Roman military, led by, obviously, a Tarquin, um, beat back the invaders, you know, but what Tarquin did was, um, I'm, I think he let the Sabines go free, but he captured the Etruscan auxiliaries. Now, uh, this really angered some of the warlords of Etruria, and they decided to send their full, the full force of their army against uh, Tarquin. Now, and once again, Tarquin beat them. Handsley. And, uh, he got even more money because of this. So, as you can see, here's his heaps and piles of money. And, uh, with this money, he did a couple of different things. Um, he started by creating the Circus Maximus, which we remember is one of the main landmarks in Rome today. And basically, um, the chariots raced around the arena, and the first one to finish won, and basically, it was a simple pastime, but one that would continue even into the Byzantine era. Um, the other major thing he did with all that money was he built uh, the Cloaca Maxima, Rome's first sewer, where the sewage was conveyed underground. Now, now we talk about his successor, Servius Tullius. Um, Servius Tullius was found as a boy. Apparently, he was a companion. He was um, the son of a major prince in the area, also named Servius Tullius. And uh, what his his father's kingdom was apparently conquered, according to the legend. Obviously, none of this we can say for sure. But um, basically, he was taken along with his mother to the imperial palace in Rome. Um, one day, um, according to the legend, um, his head spontaneously burst into a nimbus of fire while he was sleeping, but he didn't care, he just went on sleeping. 
um, Tanaquil, who was either a, an actual prophet or just very skilled in politics, decided that that qualified him as the next king. And now we come to the end of Tarquin's reign and the death of of his of the f first emperor or not emperor king the first king of the Tarquin dynasty. So these two fellows here, if you remember, those are Ancus Martius' sons. We're still pretty bitter about not being able to become king. So uh, they basically um, what they did was they got very angry and they decided to launch a raid on the palace. So, here, as you can see, here's, um, here's Ancus Martius' son here, and he, and basically, one of their men, we don't know if it was them themselves or just one of their, them, um, got into the palace with a mace, and, uh, clubbed him, and clubbed Tarquin to death. And that was the end of Tarquin. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was a fairly good king by the standards of the Roman Kingdom, you know, he didn't do anything crazy, um, he, he was a very successful conqueror, um, but then, Tanaquil, showing yet another, um, symptom of either political, um, poli poli no, it was not prof- it, she wasn't being a prophet this time, she was just being politically astute, um, what she did was she pretended that, um, Tarquin wasn't actually dead, he was only wounded. Um, and w until, apparently, he either died or he was fit to rule again, she appointed Servius Tullius as a regent. Um, he was by this time an adult, so ignore the pacifier and the lack of hair. Anyway, so Servius Tullius was the regent, and this gave him time, um, to, I guess, get a, um, show the senators that he was good at ruling before he became king in his own right, which I think was a very clever piece of manipulation. Um, Ancus Martius's kids, I think, died. I'm not entirely sure, but that's probably what happened to them. And, uh, that was the beginning to the end of the first king of the Tarquin dynasty, which is what we refer to, um, as the three kings after Ancus Martius. Alright, so now we're going to talk about Servius Tullius, the successor to Tarquin the- who we're going to now refer to as Tarquin the Elder, because there was another one. Anyway, so Servius Tullius is the sixth king of Rome, and the one most associated with reforms, and very populous reforms at that. Um, some of his tactics wouldn't seem out of place in modern day politics. Um, so basically, what a couple of things he did on taking power, he fought the Etruscans, so obviously you can see them represented here, he beat them, and uh, he conquered a little bit more of the surrounding area. So that was um, a major benefit to Rome. You know, it, it now had a sphere of influence that was huge, at least comparatively huge to other cities in the area. So obviously the Etruscans got beaten very badly, and Servius Tullius is not remembered for that, however. Um, he's best remembered for the things that he did that still perpetuate into our society in this day. So the first thing he did was uh, he changed the he changed the structure of the government to include a popular assembly or an assembly of the people. Um, doesn't mean that everybody loved it. That's the other meaning of the word popular. So if you consider this section as the population, this is what it was like before. So this is the only section of the population that was allowed to vote. So the patricians is what they were called. But now. Almost all the populace was allowed to vote, and they were divided up into blocks called centuries, which, contrary to popular beliefs, usually did not have 100 people. So these centuries were voting blocks, and um, even though um, technically this granted a lot more people voting rights, what we would now consider plebs, or plebeians, they, they now had voting rights, but... Uh, the richest segment of the population, so the richest centuries, still got to vote first, and the poorer ones only got called on to vote if there was a deadlock or people didn't agree and there's no way to resolve the situation. So, that was one of the main legacies of Servius Tullius. 
um, another one was the military reform. So if you recall, since the days of Romulus, um, as you can see, here's a your basic soldier grunt. What he was originally supposed to do was just rush at the enemy and engage them in single combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Greek influence had slowly been creeping into um, into Rome from the south. Um, so Greek Greece had some colonies in the south of Italy, and therefore Servius Tullius decided to adopt the military formation known as the phalanx, which you'll recall is very popular in ancient Greece, you've probably heard of it, it was a major thing, and um, Servius Tullius decided to adopt this as the main formation and organizational unit of the, of the kingdom. So, uh, basically, what a phalanx was, for those of you that don't know, is um, it was a line of sp a line of spears about eight to ten men long, I think, and a couple um, and at least and pretty deep as well. So, and then the f it would l march in one tightly packed body to uh, kill people. That's basically what it did. Um, this so this was the main unit of the Roman army from now until much later, as we'll see in some in something called the Samnite Wars. But for now, this was this was the Roman thing. Another reform credited to Servius Tullius was the coin. Earlier, people just used to heave around chunks of gold to pay for their stuff. But now, this was a real coin. Um, this was still in the minority though, and people didn't actually use it very much. So we're not we're not even sure based on the historical record whether it was actually Servius Tullius that instituted the coin. Um, this right here is a diagram of, I guess, the rich lording it over the poor. Um, it's very symbolic. Or it could just be that I'm a bad artist and I can't actually draw the rich lording it over the poor. Um, anyway, um, the thing that is most interesting about Servius Tullius, however, including his popular reforms, was his death. So, if I draw a family tree here, um... Imagine at the top, this is Tarquinius Priscus, who we talked about earlier. Um, he had two sons. Um, Tarquin, um, well, Tarquin, who we'll call Tarquin the Proud. So, Tarquin the Proud is there. And another son, who doesn't really matter. Now, um, he also had a daughter um, named Tarquinia. And Tarquinia got married to Servius Tullius, and they had two children. Um, one kid who doesn't really matter, and another kid named Tullia the Younger. Okay? And Tullia the Younger is important. So basically what happened was, Servius Tullius wanted to preserve his name, so, uh, he married, um, his, his kids to Tarquin's kids. So basically, um, this kid married this kid, and this kid married this kid. Now, Tarquin was not very happy about this. That is to say, Tarquin the Younger. So what he did was, uh, he killed his wife, and Tullia the Younger did the same with her husband, so, and then they married. So, just, I'm sorry, this is very spur of the moment, but uh, they got married, it was not very touching, considering it, it happened via murder. Anyway, so they got married, and uh, Tullia the Younger convinced Tarquin to basically just to kill to kill Servius Tullius. That's that's basically it. So what Tarquin did was he went to the Senate House, not pictured here, and he basically told the senators, Servius Tullius is trash, cancel him, he's such a noob. And uh Servius Tullius didn't like this, so he went down to the Senate House to defend himself. Tarquin um this is a dramatization by the way, um I'm, I don't own like the actual thing. But, if someone wants to make this into a movie, call me. So anyway, Tarquin goes like, You're a stupid old man, and kicks him down the stairs, and he falls down and falls down, and then a bunch of Tarquin's henchmen murder him. And that was the end of Servius Tullius. Um, I'll just put the little red X's over his eyes. And, now, Tarquinius... Superbus, as he would know, come to be known. So Superbus basically means the proud, Tarquin the proud, because um, he 
he was called proud because he refused to even bury Servius Tullius, you know, he just left him to rot. This was one of the big major betrayals of um, the Roman Kingdom, and it eventually led to the formation of the Roman Republic, uh, an institution we'll discuss next time. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, please like, please comment, please do all of these things, and I would really enjoy it if you did all of these things, and, uh, okay, just...